Morning all, um, this is a video about the different types of data, just giving you a quick breakdown about the main points of difference and a couple of examples of each, which hopefully clears a few things up. Uh, so to start with down here, I've got the heading types of data and there are two overarching main types of data. And they're hopefully pretty self-explanatory, especially in the titles. Um, the first one we have is numerical data. So numerical data, as you might have guessed, is concerned with numbers, number answers. So if you ask a question, for example, what is the temperature? You're going to get a number answer in response. Uh, compare that to the other main type, categorical data, where you might ask a question and a, you're asking a question about a category. So what is your favorite car color? For example, your answers are going to be things like red, blue, white, black, and they're not going to be concerned with numbers, so they're categories or categorical data. Um, usually students find those two pretty easy to distinguish. It's when we get down into the subcategories that it becomes more challenging for students. So um, I'm going to talk a bit more in depth about those. So first we'll look at uh, numerical data and we'll break that down. So there is two main types that we're going to concern ourselves with. There is going to be discrete, discrete and continuous. So discrete data is uh, one and continuous data is the other. And um, this is probably uh, one of the more challenging uh, differentiations to make. Um, discrete data though is data which uh, is gonna be made up of individual values and there's nothing in between them. So I might even write this down. Uh, oops, I want to go to blue. So individual values, I might write that are distinct with nothing in between values, okay? And what I mean by nothing in between values, I mean if you're either this value or you're this value, okay? There's no like half values or quarter values or anything like that. Um, often we represent discrete data as integers only, so numbers one, two, three, four, five, um, but that's not always the case. And I'm gonna give a counter example very shortly, but first I wanna talk about Con, uh, continuous data as a uh, definition. And this is going to be data which can uh, belong to any value along a continuum. Continuum. Um, meaning if you pick two data values, there is another data value in between. In fact, there's probably infinite data values because it's a sliding scale for continuous data. It's not like you're hopping from uh, possibility to possibility. It's just a sliding list of possibilities. So let's give some examples for these two. We have, um, I might use a different color. Let's use orange for the examples. For example, discrete data, a very common one that we use in schools because it's relevant, is number of students in a class. Number of students in a class. This can be 25, 26, 21, 12, but between the values of let's say 20 and 21, 20 and 21, there's no in between. You can't have 20 and a half students in a class. And yes, a lot of my students say, what if a student doesn't have a leg, sir? Well, yes, of course, maybe a student doesn't have all of their body parts, but that's still a student. So you can't have half a student, okay? So that's a discrete uh, numerical piece of data is the number of students in a class. Uh, continuous, often people uh, associate this with decimal places, which is uh, pretty useful, I suppose, as a, as a generalization. And we're going to say an example of uh, the continuous data is going to be, let's say, temperature. Because it can be 21 degrees, it can be 22 degrees, but it can also be half a degree because temperature is not finite. Often we do chunk temperature into one degree Celsius groups, 
but it's not always the case. Sometimes it will actually be 20 and a half degrees. Um, another example is height. So two people could be the same height in terms of pure centimeters. However, we could break it down even further if we improved our measurement, if we made sure that my hair wasn't sticking up, adding a couple of centimeters to my height. Uh, so height is a continuum. You could be 180, you could be 181 centimeters, or you could be between there. You could be 180.4 centimeters or 180.379 centimeters. And you can break it down in finer and finer chunks. So it's not discrete, it's actually along a continuum which makes it continuous data. Now I wanna put an example out there for discrete data that has decimals. Yes, that's right, discrete data that has decimals. And this example is going to be shoe size, okay? Just because you can get a shoe size that's seven and a half, okay, does not automatically make it continuous because there's nothing between a size seven and a seven and a half. There's size seven, then seven and a half, and there's no 7.25, okay? So despite the fact that shoe size has decimals sometimes, size seven, size seven and a half, size eight, size eight and a half, they're still discrete and distinct values that go from one to the other, and there's nothing in between those values. So shoe size is another example of uh, discrete numerical data. So we might pop over to the categorical side now, and we're going to list the two subcategories as nominal and ordinal. Okay, so my um, distinction here is even more clear, but it's still quite hard for some students to distinguish between the two, so I'll try and make it as clear as possible. <clears throat> nominal data has no inherent order, okay? Um, and while I'm at it, I'm just gonna say ordinal has an inherent order. That's the only difference between the two. So they're both types of categorical data, but one has an order, ordinal, one doesn't, nominal. And the way I remember that is to have an order, it is ordinal, pretty straightforward. Okay, but a couple of examples to make it a bit more clear. And I'm gonna use uh, pretty much the same context for both of them to make it super clear, I hope. So an example, I'm gonna keep the examples in a line. So example of nominal data is I might say, pass, that's one, or fail on an exam. Okay, so that's categorical data for a start, it's a category, it's not numbers. Um, and there is, I mean, obviously pass is better than fail, but there's no like scale, there's no order to those two things. They're just completely separate things. They're kind of like our discrete numerical, it's, a, it's, a, it's one or the other. Um, whereas ordinal data, in a similar context of an exam, can be um, grade. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D, E, okay, for our, for our context. And that is a scale, there is an order there. A is better than B, B is better than C, C is better than D, D is better than E. So it's actually a sliding scale of order to these values. Um, another example of nominal data might just be car color, as I alluded to earlier. Car color has no value. Red is not necessarily better than blue. Even if people have been asked what is their favorite, it's just simply discrete boxes of data and um, the, the different categories, um, if there's no order, it makes it nominal. And um, yeah, that's probably the best example. Maybe if the question was, how do you rate your meal? If that was the question, and the answers were one, two, three, whoops, I'm running out of room here, one, two, three, etc., and they were out of um, quality, so one being low, five being really good, that's an order to that data, and that's ordinal data. So to just quickly recap, we have numerical data, which is concerned with numbers, and we have categorical data, which is the rest of it. The, the rest of the data that's not concerned with numbers at all. 
Within numerical data, we have discrete data, which takes distinct values that have no in-between. So they're little boxes that you can put the data into, whereas continuous data can kind of be along a spectrum. Okay, so temperature, height, that sort of thing. In categorical data, we have nominal data, which has no inherent order. They're just categories, for example, car color, or whether a student passed or failed a test. And ordinal data is a type of categorical data that has an inherent order. For example, a rating of something or maybe a grade that a student got on an exam. So I hope this cleared up a little bit about the different data types and I hope it's gonna help you categorize data in the future.